Yeah, hey, they said pregame. They L- they L A now, Gabe. He from L A now. <laughs> I'm not turning my back on Seattle. I'm just saying this is the way the um, world is. What's Woo! going on, everybody? Welcome back, you guys. Woo-hoo! We got a list video for you today. Some advice for you 20-year-olds just graduated from college. Joining us today, Richie Lee, thank you for letting us use your studio. For sure. This Did one's going to be good. Basically, we're going to be giving you guys seven pieces of advice that are going to help you live a cool baller life mm. while still being frugal. Set the P now, word. By- <laughs> baller. Well, you the- didn't just say live a good life. There's, there's a no, no, no. He said baller. We know a lot of people, they want to live cool lives. They want cool things. But you know what? There's a way to do it while still doing it on a budget. We, have, Me and Andrew have been watching you know, some of those success channels. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them really criticize the a lot of behaviors of young 20-year-olds, right? Whether that's buying Starbucks, buying name brands. And they're just like, you know what? Don't do any of that. Save it up. You know, get buy income streams. Don't. Yeah. It's not that black and white. You can't just eliminate your bad habits. Right. You got to be a little bit human. These are success tips for kids in their young 20s that are kind of like, they like consumerism. Kind of like a uh, baller life hacks. And if you guys are excited to hear these seven points, make sure to hit that like button, click subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Let's go. First up, the number one tip, focus on the resale and the actual value of the things that you're buying. Ooh. I mean, we talk about this a lot on the channel. It's cool to buy stuff that doesn't have resale value. That's fine, but you gotta know. You just gotta be aware. It is gonna be hard to let it go. So I like this one, because if ever you needed cash for something you bought, Buy things that are easy to flip. You're going to find a buyer right away. Just be aware of that. Low transaction cost. What are these things? Are they generally usually the better brands of things? No, 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 no. I would not even say it's a better brand thing. It's it's a really case-by-case item thing. Because just because Louis Vuitton, quote unquote, may be a better brand than, you know, a Nike sweatshirt, that Nike sweatshirt will be easier to flip than a Louis Vuitton sweatshirt using louis vuitton as an example the louis vuitton monogram bags you can flip that in about 10 minutes if you want right because so many people want that particular bag i I think the biggest example that i give to people and they can make it applicable throughout sneakers and clothing is iphones iphones it doesn't matter even if you're rocking an iphone 3 there is still cash value in an old iphone Okay, yes. You know what I mean? Like iPhone, Apple products are essentially almost like a commodity. Maybe it's not to the level of like a gold bar, but (laughs) it's the closest thing I've ever seen to a gold bar as an electronic. It theoretically has depreciation. Hey, I know people make arguments that other brands are definitely better than certain Apple products, and that's totally fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you buy AirPods, you can actually resell those AirPods. If you buy a MacBook, you can resell that MacBook pretty easily. In 10 minutes. (laughs) Easily. If you are buying an Android, I would just like people to be aware you're buying it more for personal reasons and uh, not because you can right. easily you, sell it. You like the customizability yeah. or something like yeah. that. Which is fine, but just be aware. When you buy sneakers, Richie, do, is it kind of like buying cars? Is there some oh, relation? Yeah. There's like, a do huge you think, comparison. Do you think about it the same way? Oh yeah, for sure. Even from like the uh, aspect of like driving a car off the lot versus undesing a pair of sneakers. Same concept. You're right. paying for it. We were talking about this earlier. It's kind of like you rather have five pairs of Union 1s rather than maybe a pair of Yeezy 2s. You know what I mean? Because to get that price for the Yeezy 2s, you almost had to sit on them, find the right buyer. So how easy it is to let go and get rid of is you got to take that into you consideration. You mean how big of the market of buyers there is. And especially if you are close to that. For example, if you're in the sneaker community, like you're part of the band LA group or something, it's going to be a lot easier to unload your sneakers than if you're not. Mm-hmm. We know that reselling old items does take some work, but if you have a friend who does it a lot, they might be able to do it for a percentage of the sales. Or you can use a variety of sites and apps to sell. No one said you can't buy the things you want, but it's smarter if you can flip it to buy the next thing. How do you know if it has resale value? Just do some quick research. Certain brands and specifically certain pieces have a much higher demand and resale value than others. Basically, buying that one premium item you really want could potentially be worth it, but only if you do your due diligence. Basically, if you want cool clothes, you probably can afford it, but only if you flip it. Number two, guys, a big concept I want you guys to understand is cost of usage. So, for example, if I bought something, whether it's a shirt, a sneaker, a gadget for $1,000, I sell it for $700 at the end of its life, Mm -hmm. but I used it 300 times in that time. So, think about it. That's $1,000 minus $700. That's $300. I use it 300 times. My cost per usage was only $1 per usage. Okay. With that being said, you're saying find things that have a low cost of usage? Yes. Okay, that's a good one. It kind of reminds me of like a Beamer. 
huge, huge cost of usage right. compared the, the, to a Honda. Yeah, But exactly. you might, well, you're not getting the same points with a Honda from a Beamer, but that's what you're paying for. You're paying for a high cost of usage. Each mile on a Beamer costs way more. You're losing way more than a mile in a Honda. Nike Yeezys, there's a high cost of usage. Sometimes when I like wear a pair, I'm like, ooh, this is $100 right here, one wear. Rich, isn't that why boats are not a good idea? Right? They say uh, the best days of a boat owner are the day you buy and the day you sell. Spend money on the things you use every day and cut back on the things you don't. The more you use something, the more it's worth based off the usage equation of depreciation over usage rate. If a luxury wallet is $500 and you resell it for $350, but you used it every day for two years, then you just divide $150 by 700 130 days that's 20 cents a day but you just can't lose your wallet then so for cars just look at the cost of ownership bmws are super expensive because they lose a lot of value quickly and are expensive to repair toyotas and hondas have a very low cost due to durability and resale value however the bmw might make you feel extra special so you'll need to determine your priorities number three guys pre-game before the club oh but <laughs> pre-game and but pre-gaming can be applicable to anything pre-game before you get to the airport you i know, gotta ask real quick do you guys say pre-funk or pre-game because uh in seattle they say pre-funk i've seen i've heard i knew no, we, I grew, we grew up saying pre-funk but uh, when yeah. i got to <laughs> they, california they hey, said pre-game they, they la now gabe they from la now I'm not turning my back on Seattle. I'm just saying this is the way the um, world is. Listen, a lot of people like to go out, and maybe if you're especially the in their twenties, that's a huge like. Just money goes into the air, a, right? And for a lot of people, when they're the first one of their friend group to get the good job, they're picking up the tab a lot. But I that's that, that's bro. rough on your wallet. You know who was the first one that gave me this concept? AJ Raphael. Before <laughs> before we had any money, or maybe you guys had money. I didn't have any money. He right. had talked about the concept of taking care of tabs a lot. Right, and right, I was right. Like, Whoa. You, yeah. you really pay for your friends that up. much? Right, right, right. He's, he's like, a nice bro, dude. He was like, stop. You got to stop it at some point, man. Yeah. Rich, what, what is the, the mental blocks that people are going to have to get over? Because a lot of people, I think they want to do this plan. But you got to get the table. Yeah, but they ultimately don't execute this, the, the frugality of the club. Because those two sound like two opposing things. I don't think it's a hard compromise, actually. Pre-funking almost adds to your night, and it saves you money. And it's just a good experience. I don't think it's a huge compromise. I think maybe people just kind of overlook it. Let me run the game plan. So you guys have some drinks at your apartment before. Yep. And then you take an Uber. So you all share an Uber and Uber XL. So the cost is low per person. And then you go to the club. And then maybe you just get one bottle because everybody wants the table. You're at the group. You're celebrating something. Cool. Bro. But then you just don't get yeah. that second bottle. It's even funner. Being drunk waiting for the first bottle. <laughs> you don't want to just be standing there sober. The, the the ride to the club drunk is the funnest part. Not driving. The ride. I'm saying you're right, right. being no, buzzed. It is, it is fun. And then <laughs> <buzzed. laughs> everybody's always get a, getting the ox cord. And That's what I'm saying. So it, this is not a hard compromise. All right, what do you think <laughs> about just pre-funking for a lot of different situations, though, before you even head to the airport? Before you go to, you know what I mean? Like, we're not just talking about drinking alcohol. Hey, we're just talking about, hey, you about to eat at an expensive restaurant? <laughs> I'm gonna eat a little at home, so I'm gonna just get some cheap. Rich, right, right, right. I remember you used to drink a whole glass of water before we were eating. Well, that was more to lose weight, though, huh? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's to save money. But that could save money, too. That though. could save money for well, damn sure. Well, I guess what it's just about preparing yourself before you enter an environment that's been built to, to extract money yes. from you. You know what it is? Convenience costs money. Well, well that's why I, I keep that. Uh, I keep a little, like, clear bag with me when I'm ever I'm in the airport, and it's got a lot of, like, cough drops and stuff. Got it, it, got it. I don't got to pay $6 for cough drops. But then you might compromise and get the gummy bears. You did your planning on the other things. Doing a little extra planning and not only acting on impulse can go a long way. This way, you can still spend a little bit in the moment without going overboard. Remember when your mom used to sneak snacks into the movie theater to avoid the exploitation prices? And what about all the food at the airport? Just eat before you go. And it's not about avoiding all situations and activities, but it's about preparing for them. The fourth piece of advice we have for you guys that are just graduating college or you Ooh. guys are in your 20s is do not be afraid to tap your network. If you need to resell anything, if you need to find a roommate, I think a lot of people are afraid to put it out there nowadays, but that's the reason social media is good too because you have so many connections. And also, mm -hmm. if you're coming straight out of school or whatever organization or education, you're gonna know some. Be resourceful. You know what I like to say about this? I think a lot of people like to get their own apartment straight out of college, but I'm like, yo, if you wanna live by the city or in the city in your own apartment, that's really expensive. If you find roommates, one, that's a good way of synergy between your two networks. It, it just takes a little bit more legwork and obviously the uh, relationship managing between you and your roommates. But guys, 
That's part you, of growing you up. You don't have to do it when you guys get older anyways. It doesn't matter. Your friends and followers can be a great resource nowadays. What's the use of social media if you can't actually connect with people? Being able to put the puzzle pieces together is a skill. Sometimes there isn't even any more work involved. Just connecting pre-existing systems that weren't aware of each other before. Post an IG story. Facebook post. If you have a good reputation, people are willing to help you out. Just don't be annoying and don't be schemy about it. Number five, guys. Share your food. No I'll, pun intended, five guys, share your food. Yeah. <laughs> share your food because it's like, it, there's so many different reasons for it. Whether we're talking about developing cultural capital for just being more open-minded and a more worldly cultured person, all the way to saving money, all the way to just increasing your networks. Yeah. Listen, I think there's a lot of Instagrammable food out there. A lot of aesthetically focused foods that you want to try but are kind of expensive. Try Shout them once. To the fusion spot. Yeah. But to me, the more obscure foods are like the immigrant restaurants are the cool ones. Because one, you become more cultured. Two, not everybody can travel, especially during these times. So what's the next best thing? You go to an authentic restaurant of that culture. You're extrapolating more value out of that $10, $15 you are spending. You're exactly. getting more value for it. Putting $5 towards you know a fast food item first ten dollars on something you've never had before with your friend and experience something to talk about hey being cultured is cool now too there's a lot of smart people that have written about the reasons why you shouldn't eat alone while on the path to success inviting someone out to lunch can go a long way also eating more interesting meals can make you a more interesting person number six do your research on the items that you purchase but don't get paralyzed or spend too much time doing the research. I think that that's one thing I've noticed for a lot of people, it's like they're on two ends of the spectrum. Either they're just not even researching their decision or they're just researching it to the point where it's like, you're about to spend $20, but you just spent about 40 minutes researching $20. It's called overthinking. Overthinking can lead you to just not doing anything. Yep. So let's say you spend three days researching something. Oh, what's the best blah, 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 comparing this and this. And the really the difference is only like 50 to $100. You just spent three days of your brain power thinking about people value making quick decisions in sports you don't have all the time to make your decision in sports so the quicker you can make your decision that's valued as a player i think one of the things uh the frameworks that i've developed that's helpful to make reads guys for me at least is the law of thirds so the law of thirds means the three by three grid that's nine boxes and i actually much prefer this way of ranking things rather than zero to ten Okay. You know how people be like, oh, is this what's this thing out of 10? That doesn't really make that much sense to me because everybody like has such a weird scale for stuff. I like to rank things A, B, and C, and then A1, A2, A3, B1, <laughs> I know B2, you, B2 yeah. B3. So that's my preferred ranking scale for life. Three different tiers makes it more clear to where things fall. It's more specific. Yeah. yeah, it's more specific because you have your high end, your middle end, and your low end. This is like a uh, internet concept with Netflix. It's been two hours, you oh. know, <laughs> oh. uh, flipping through the uh, through all the movies and yeah. stuff, and by that time, you, you damn near could have watched the movie. Oh, people do that with food. They spend 40 minutes looking through Yelp, and I've done the same thing, only to realize, I don't, I don't even, I just got some snacks at home. <laughs> it's a waste of time, man. I know when you're young, it's different because you feel like you have so much time, but when you get older, I guess the value of time like kind of goes up. So. These are things that we actually learned and went through ourselves. Doing deep research is the right thing to do, but try putting a deadline on your decisions, especially if it's not a huge one. Let's make a decision in 10 minutes is a lot more efficient than letting it sit around in your head for days. Time is money, so the more time you spend thinking, it could cost you. Basically, there is a balance between being diligent and actually moving forward on a project. You need both in life to get stuff done. All right, Last but that. not least, guys, this is just a, the seventh simple piece of advice we have for young people out there find the messengers that relate to you mm -hmm. so for a lot of people guys there's been a lot of like success books written in american history in english for about like a hundred years mm -hmm. but in some of those books do obviously have overlapping information not, not all the books are going to hit in your soul find content that is applicable to your life and what could help you out Think and that's that why a lot of people don't like School curriculums. Yeah, yeah exactly. Don't apply to them. They want to talk about taxes and stuff. <laughs> now you're talking about George Washington. You know, I had read through a lot of different success books in the past two years, and I couldn't even finish some of them because I just didn't connect with the person and their yeah. story. But I'm not going to lie, and this is a little plug for 50 Cent's Hustle Smarter, Hustle Harder book. Like, I thought that really connected because we followed 50 Cent's career, yeah. and so he brings up people and stories that are relevant, and I'm like, oh, I know who yeah. Lloyd Banks is, blah, blah, blah. You know, and so anything he said just made more sense to me. Now more so than ever, you could find advice from someone that is really catered towards your life and situation. Sometimes two different people will tell you the exact same thing, but because somebody resonated with your soul and you relate to them, 
You actually absorb the information way more. So I do recommend following industry verified people with real accolades. So you guys, those are just some seven quick tips for Man, you those guys. Those are good. Those are yeah, good. That, yeah. that are, you know, just add value to your life and go over all the seven taglines real quick. Number one, resell your old items. Number two, look at the true usage value of something. Number three, pregame for life and not only the club. Number four, don't be scared to tap your network. Number five, don't eat alone and don't eat boring. Number six, do your research, but don't get analysis paralysis. And number seven, the messenger matters. Find mentors that resonate with you. I think you guys out there, if you guys are just graduating college, follow all these, look into them. I feel like these are things that we all went through, and I'm not saying I've mastered 100% of it but they're all relevant and I think about them time to time. So we really hope it was helpful and we're not claiming these tips will make you a millionaire, but these are ways to still enjoy life while being responsible and thinking about the future. Let us know what some of your tips are in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a huge like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace. Shout out to the, you know, Graham Steffens and all that stuff like that, but I think a lot of people are not trying to give up Starbucks. If you find those <laughs> success tips a little bit too extreme, I think you're going to like this video.